The best way to listen to the best of the week is on the relevant radio app, free and always free. Download and share the number one free Catholic app today in the App Store. People nowadays argue about many different things, like whether or not God exists or who's the best presidential candidate or what is the best dog breed in the world. (laughs) Although, if you ask my family, there is no doubt that it's the Beagle. As my wife likes to say, who can refuse those beagle eyes? <laughs> Sarah's over there grinning on the other side because uh, you know, she knows how much I love beagles. But uh, although we might uh, disagree on many different things, it's hard to argue about what is objectively beautiful. Joining us live from Yuma, Arizona, is Sister Mary uh, Teresa Batak to uh, discuss never arguing about the beautiful. Sister Mary Teresa is a newly professed member of the Franciscan Sisters of Christian Charity, a religious community based in Wisconsin. She's in her seventh year serving as a theology teacher and cross-country coach at Yuma Catholic High School in Yuma, Arizona. Sister Mary Teresa, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Once again, it is a joy to be with you. Oh, it's always a joy to be on the program. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Sister, we know that people can argue about just about everything under the sun, especially when you go online. Some of these arguments are absolutely insane. You know what it's like to to be uh, provoked. Uh, Can you share with us a little bit of of some of maybe your experiences uh, in the classroom, uh, you know, uh, teaching uh, youngsters? Oh, definitely. So our high school, we have, it's a Catholic high school, but certainly we welcome lots of non-Catholic students as well. And I had a class a couple of years ago. Um, they've all since graduated, <laughs> but a couple of years ago, I had a class in my A period. So at eight in the morning that I had three people in the same class who were very kind of like combative and a little bit hostile in their questioning um, and things like that. And I always, I always encourage and welcome questions because I, I really think if you don't have questions, you're not paying attention, right? Because since God is infinite and we're not, questions are, are a sign of like wanting to know more. So I don't necessarily think they're a sign of doubt or a bad thing and instead the opposite. But these were not like questions of curiosity, trying to learn more. These were questions like intending to provoke one another or trying to provoke me. And at eight in the morning, this was just a lot for me. And so I remember one time. Did they think it was funny? I think they, they just thrive off of debate or arguing. And one of the weeks, uh, several weeks into the school year, I was just getting like, I could feel myself getting increasingly frustrated and kind of like wanting to like step in and like defend Jesus or like defend the faith or like put a kibosh on this. And I remember very distinctly, like the Lord speaking into my heart, I don't need you to defend me. And I just, it was kind of stunning because I I did not expect that. I thought I was like, you know, doing the right thing and defending our faith and things like that. But I think it is so true because people are not argued into believing. And to me, the clearest proof of that is the debates that we're coming up onto um, of any kind. When you have debates, you never see people switch sides and be like, oh, you got me. Like, I'm moving. I'm going to switch political parties or I'm going to switch my position or things like that. Because I really think we can't argue somebody into believing something. But I think the one thing in our culture and in our world that we never argue is what's beautiful. Right. Like that you don't have to persuade somebody that the Rocky Mountains of Colorado are stunningly gorgeous or that the view from like Mather Point at the Grand Canyon is just like awe inspiring. We all kind of intuitively, instinctively know what's beautiful. And I think the really hopeful thing in that is our culture is obsessed with beauty, isn't it? Oh, no question about it. I mean, uh, and, and again, it, it depends on what you think, you know, how you define beauty, because uh, in, in the mainstream culture, uh, you know, beauty is primarily exterior. You know, you, you look on the, the magazine covers and the airbrushing and, uh, you know, TV commercials, everything is packaged real nice and slick. That's what they hold as a standard, you know, of beauty. You know, uh, the, these people that you see on television or in, in these, uh, you know, commercials or on magazines, they don't really look like that at home, you know, when they're washing the dishes. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And it, it, that's so interesting that you say that because, yeah, it was. I know because I worked in those country. TV <laughs> newsrooms and I used to see what the anchors look like before and after they went into makeup. Yeah. See, that's so interesting. And, and for me with our cross country kids or even 
I help with our seniors. They do the Kairos retreat program. And so it's a weekend and they all stay at the school. And it is wild. The hair care, the skin care, the personal care routines that these kids have. I mean, like hours out of their day and that they spend doing this and, and they just don't feel free to show up to anything without that that they're not them if they don't like quote, put their face on or things like that. And it kind of, my heart a little bit breaks at that every year that there are so many kids who, who just kind of struggle with who they are as a person because they think without certain things or without makeup or without whatever clothing or whatever, that they're just not going to be accepted or they're not beautiful or they're not loved. Uh, And then of course with cross country, always like making sure that my kids don't like, push too far in terms of like healthy diet and nutrition and not going to the extreme or things like that. And I I do think that it can be a challenge in our society because the standard of like physical beauty is very, very strong. But what I was suggesting to some of our students recently is I said, well, like think of the people that you want to spend the most time with. And if we think of even just like the top three, And then think of like the reason that you want to spend the most time with those people. My guess is none of those people, the reason is because they're beautiful or handsome, right? Like that beauty obviously is something way deeper that if beauty is captivating, like those views of the mountains or of the Grand Canyon or the Pacific Ocean or whatever else you might have, if beauty is captivating, then that means like there's something deeper there. And I think it's not captivating like at skin deep it's way deeper than that and to me the the image that i think beautifully beautifully captures that is i'm sure you'll know which one i'm talking about of mother Teresa with princess diana because princess diana was just like the icon of beauty at that time and like physical beauty and mother Teresa was never that (laughs) you know like you see them side by side and mother Teresa just looks so tiny and she's this old wrinkled Albanian woman and nobody would ever define her as like a physically attractive woman. And yet there's something like radiant and compelling about her. And I read a book on her recently and her friendship with Princess Diana and Princess Diana just being drawn to her and how often when Princess Diana and Mother Teresa were together, people flocked to Mother Teresa, not Princess Diana. Right, like this idea that there's something like of beauty that's deeper than the skin of like the people that we most want to spend time with have like that inner beauty that somehow attracts us to them. And I think that that is, uh, you know, part of the lesson for today here in our d- discussion that what really counts in the Lord's eyes is our hearts. You know, that's why we have this devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. The Lord wants our hearts. He's not so much concerned with how great our hair looks or our makeup or, you know, how <laughs> buffed we may look. He wants the inner soul uh, to be beautiful. And it's okay if you're beautiful on the outside also, but you, the ideal would be to be beautiful on the outside outside and beautiful on the inside. Right. And and it's so interesting that you say that because it reminds me your words of that line from, I think it's first Samuel, when Samuel is looking to anoint one of Jesse's sons king. And he thinks that that firstborn son, like surely it's him. He's tall and he's strong and he's handsome and good looking. And, and God says to Samuel, like, nope, I've not chosen him because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. And that line has always struck me so much that so often our priorities are a little bit skewed, that it's great. And I think it's a huge opportunity for us as Christians that our culture so values beauty. But I think it's our job as Christians to then reorient our culture to what true beauty is, that if the Lord looks into the heart, then so should we, that that's the thing that really counts. Because I think we all know physical beauty is fleeting, right? Like, I I mean, you're not always as, as you say, like as buff as you are at 16, you're not always as physically attractive as you were as, as a young woman, right? Like those sorts of things that, that beauty is fleeting. That's only skin deep, but like our beauty interiorly can hopefully only grow all through our lifetime. Well, Sister Mary Teresa, when I was watching your uh, wonderful podcast that you shared on, on Facebook, and I'm seeing those those mountain images and the beautiful sunsets of the Pacific, the first thing that I thought of was walking into a magnificent basilica or cathedral. Like, for example, walking into St. Peter's uh, Basilica in Rome, you walk in and you're just like blown away 
by the sheer beauty of it. Uh, it's it's like we're hardwired for beauty. Even if somebody is not even a Christian and they walk in, somehow their hearts are lifted up uh, to heaven without them even realizing why. And isn't that so true? I really think that that's one of the great gifts of like the Catholic patrimony is that we've always loved beauty. This is not a new thing for us, that we've always loved beauty as Catholics, that, that beauty lifts our hearts to God. And I think my experience of that has been our school is large enough that we can't fit into our chapel for our weekly mass. So we do it in the gym, which works, but it's not ideal. But the moment that we get the kids in the chapel for like our first Friday adoration or things, always the comments that I get is like, oh, sister, it's so much easier to pray here. Well, yeah, because you're not looking across the gym at your buddies making faces and doing whatever. You're not looking at the hoop and thinking of somebody hitting a three-pointer. Exactly. Yeah, you're not distracted by all of that. But also, our chapel is beautiful. And so, like, it it becomes an easy space for prayer. And I really think beauty always lifts our hearts and minds to God. Yeah, just think of um, the the power to touch uh, hearts when someone goes to a really beautiful liturgy, a beautiful mass, uh, and with beautiful music and uh, and and beautiful art uh, within the church. You put all those three together, and that's how people end up, you know, converting without a word being said. They realize that there's something greater out there, and uh, you know, I I think that you know, for example, here in the in the Chicago area, there's a, a church that's known uh, for people literally walking in and converting just from the sheer beauty of it. St. John Cantus in downtown Chicago, that's what they do. Liturgies, uh, music, and, and art. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing the power of beauty to touch somebody's heart. Uh, I had someone on the show who uh, wasn't a Christian, was converted by walking into that church and, and hearing the music and seeing the art and the beauty. Yeah, and that's such an incredible thing, because I really do think, yeah, if we're saying that you can't argue somebody into believing, isn't it so much more beautiful to not have argument a part of your conversion story, in a sense? Like, you're not arguing with God when you walk into a beautiful church. I've been to St. John Cantus. It's stunningly gorgeous. And, And just like, yeah, it just takes your breath away to see something like that. And I think the huge challenge for us, then, as Christians, is beauty is bigger than just like beautiful churches and things that God, like, like you were saying, is asking for us to have beautiful hearts and to give our hearts to him. And I think we see those people, like the people that we are attracted to who have that quality, who have like real inner beauty that they like were compelled to like be, be near them. We want to be like them. And I really think I've noticed with with the freshmen that I teach that so many of them feel at the start of the year when we discuss, okay, they have to write me a paragraph of what do they know about God, and another paragraph of what has their experience of God been like up until this point in their life. And always what they say in the experience paragraph is, by and large, the majority of them feel that they have never had an experience of God, which is really interesting. And I think they have to look at, okay, well, what are they expecting? But at the same time, I, I really think so many people feel that way, whether it's right or wrong, they, they feel that they've never had an experience of God. But I think so many people experience us every day. And when they experience us, do they experience God? Because that's kind of the litmus test for if we really have those beautiful hearts that we're called to have. Well, Sister Mary Teresa, I'll have you know that I, I keep a beautiful holy card of Mother Teresa. I'm holding it as we speak here in studio all the time because she has so many great uh, inspirational sayings. uh, And so I have a few underlined on the the back of the card just to kind of give me a little uh, shot in the arm whenever I need it. You know, uh, things like, before you speak, it is necessary for you to listen for God speaks in the silence of the heart, which brings up the question in my mind, how can we emulate? How can we be like Mother Teresa? and be truly beautiful people on the inside, not just the outside. Yeah, and I think it really comes down to, just like you said, those churches that makes them beautiful and compelling and attractive to us is the presence of Christ there, right? Like Jesus present in the tabernacle constantly converts hearts. We saw that this year with the Eucharistic revival um, and with all that went on with that, right? Like that Jesus in the Eucharist always converts hearts. And so the question I think for us is kind of as Mother Teresa in that quote you just mentioned said, is Jesus present in my heart? And is he just present in my heart when I go to Mass? Is he just present in my heart when I take time for prayer? 
or does have I made a space for him? Even if I'm not constantly able to like be thinking of him or whatever, right? Like, have I made that space for him that he is at home there? And I think that can be kind of the question for each of us. Well, as I was preparing to to chat with you this morning, uh, Sister uh, Mary Teresa, I thought of St. Paul, who uh, in Philippians 4, 8 writes, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Whatever is lovely, whatever is beautiful is what Paul is talking about, Sister. Yeah, so true. It's a beautiful quote. What a beautiful way to end. Absolutely. I uh, so much appreciate uh, your podcast and your perspective on, on this, the importance of that inner beauty that we should all strive for. Thanks so much uh, for uh, be- being with us uh, here uh, this morning. How can our listeners uh, plug into some of your podcasts? So they're posted on the website of the Franciscan Sisters of Christian Charity, and they get posted each week. Um, we have a Facebook page, but they're posted right on the website of the Franciscan Sisters of Christian Charity. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Sister uh, Mary you. Teresa, for being with us. This entire episode of Morning Air is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today. And thanks for listening.